2025 data engineering roadmap. So I'm just created this roadmap for two types of people, freshers and experienced. So let me define fresher and experienced first. If you are a recent college graduate or you are a student and you just wanted to enter into data engineering, then you are considered to be a fresher. And also people who have general IT experience in different tech stack and you are planning to migrate your skill set to data engineering and then you are also considered to be a fresher. Experienced means people who already have experience in data engineering and now in 2025 they are planning to upskill and they are like called experienced for this particular video. Okay, fine. Let's get into it. I'll just show you the roadmap for both fresher and experience. Let me just first start with freshers. So first prerequisite. So that is very important. SQL, Linux and any one programming language. You can pick Python, Java, Scala. So whatever like you are interested. SQL is very important. Spend more time on SQL. Try to understand in and out of SQL. And with respect to programming language, basic concepts, oops, collections, functional programming, exception handling, JDBC connectivity is wide enough. Data structure and algorithm is required only for the interview perspective. People won't use much algorithms and data structures in their day-to-day -day life work. But still, if you are good in that, you can implement that in your work as well. No one going to block you. And Linux. So ultimately, every environment of data engineering clusters are running in Linux. So obviously, your office laptop is going to be Mac or Windows, but the server that which you're going to connect and you're going to work is going to be Linux. So in and out, you need to know the Linux commands and basic scripting is fine. Data modeling and ETL concepts. So this is very much needed as an, a theoretical concept. So do, you don't want to jump into some of the practical stuff. Just go to data modeling and ETL concept. Just you can uh, get some videos in YouTube or you can make use of chat GPT. Learn it. Right. Hadoop. So uh, one thing I just wanted to tell you, whenever someone say Hadoop is dead, and I used to think uh, like it's like a RIP for their mindset, right? Hadoop isn't dead. Only MapReduce is dead. Hadoop isn't dead, right? So when you take Hadoop, HDFS, Hive and Scoop is must required. So even though you consider or you think somehow it is outdated, but it is not. Two things that why still I am recommending. If you see my all roadmap videos, every year I used to include these three components in Hadoop. Why so? See, learning Hadoop will give you some kind of fundamentals to understand, a foundations for you. It's like a fundamental for the entire big data engineering, right? So we do have a lot of uh, like designations or the skill sets for data engineering, right? So people who work with data related technologies are called data engineers. It's not only people who work with big data, right? So even you work with Oracle, MySQL, you are a data engineer or traditional ETL tools, Informatica, Abinitio, you are still a data engineer, right? But the, the market has some kind of a priority or the importance or the hype or I can say the demand, it comes only when you say that you are a big data engineer. And that's the reason I just given you the Hadoop as the first thing that as a data engineer that we should know. Right. Fine. So here HDFS Hive Scoop is must required. Uh, it all it, it won't take you much time to learn. And then Spark. So Spark is a mandatory skill set for data engineers. And that too, especially in big data engineering, Spark is a mandatory technology. So in Spark, Spark Batch, Spark SQL and Spark Streaming. Uh, you have to spend much time on Spark Badge and Spark SQL. You can spend less time uh, with respect to streaming. Just know how it works and how, how the practical part of it has is working. Right, that's it. But Spark is mandatory. So again, like cloud, uh, people used to ask me like, uh, do I need to know cloud? Yes, you need to know cloud. So not the complete part of cloud. Just filter the data service. Just go to Google, uh, Google and then search for uh, AWS data service. You will be getting a list of technologies in the AWS which supports data related work. Just filter it out and just learn anything. You you take like AWS or uh, Google uh, Google Cloud or Azure, anything is fine, but pick any one. And most of the time people used to ask me like, Gautam, so which one I have to choose? Like nowadays companies are using AWS, uh, GCP or Azure, what they're actually using. See, we cannot, as I cannot, I cannot tell you that, right? So because it depends on the company. For example, if you take Uber, right? So Uber are using all these three cloud. So that I cannot say. So it depends on the team. It, it is not even depends on the company that you are applying. It depends on the team. What actually the cloud they are working. So what is the solution then? So if the solution is pick any one cloud and start learning it. So once you have completed that, you can just concentrate on some other cloud. So multi-cloud is what people are expecting nowadays. You should need to know more than one cloud. First you start with one and then you can move on to another one. But I'll recommend you to pick these three out of any one out of these three, either AWS, GCP or Azure. But I cannot recommend whichever like cloud which is comfortable you can pick. Right. Fine. And then the important point I've mentioned in the circle, fundamentals are always important. Make sure that the fundamental, you are strong in fundamental guys. See, uh, you can ask me why, uh, like this is what the roadmap is all about for the fresher. Yes, of course I say yes. See, there are so many things. I can even add so many stuffs to you as a fresher. But the thing is, if I add more, then you will lose interest. 
right the time that you are spending on learning right that interest you will lose so and it's not because of that also but the, the industry what they're expecting from the freshers or the newcomers this is what they're expecting that's it let me just show you some of the job descriptions also if you didn't believe me i'll show you at the end of the video right so this is what you need to know even you have you, you have heard or learned about so many other tech stacks just unlearn just forget about it and just use this roadmap as a fresher and start so once you completed all of this and you feel like okay i'm ready maybe and then you can start the other roadmap which i'm going to show you for the experienced people okay that you can even pick fine so now for freshers and that's it that's what i used to say now please do watch the video completely i have a common things to uh, for both freshers and the uh, experience i have some common things to show okay so let me just jump into experience now okay now you are an experienced person what are all the things i have to go at so whatever i said for freshers it's all same for you as well so apart from that if you see right the airflow so airflow is a scheduler even like uh, even like uh, you are a fresher you can also even pick this airflow so airflow is a scheduler which we used to schedule all our jobs actually so airflow is something very leading and uh, quite famous in linkedin or even in the company circle people are talking about it people are using uh, using this airflow even i am using airflow in my day to day life to schedule the jobs flink okay uh, in 2024 the second half of 2024 flink became very famous now people started doing pos's for real okay even people so whoever using spark now people started doing pos's on flink if you are not aware of flink please please go ahead and just learn flink so now for flink we do have lot of videos and materials are there out there in youtube and you can make use of generative ai as well so you can spend some good time on flink next is databricks so try to have some idea about what is databricks and what actually they are doing and some of the functionality which is available in databricks spark is not there in the actual spark that we use from the open source so it's always good to learn uh, databricks this is also like you don't want to uh, like invest much time on practical but then you can just see some videos have some mindset because you already are data engineer as an experienced data engineer this will be easy when you start learning it uh, like if you have time you can just start the practical of this databricks as well and then you can go for snowflake yeah snowflake is also one of the cloud provider for data related services also so you can just uh, google what is snowflake and you can watch some videos but having snowflake knowledge also kind of going to add a diamond to your crown right and kafka so kafka highly used in real time projects that streaming project for data retrieval real time data retrieval and kafka in the last year right kafka has been it has lot of features they have included lots and lots of features to kafka so it's good to know kafka as well the next one is going to be dbt data builder tool this is also like people started uh, doing as a pos is i've seen in many places and i've connected with so many people and people started talking about it right and then open file format so this is also very important iceberg delta lake or hudi you can pick any one which supports like which gives you the strong support as seed support for your query engine that you are using so it's really good not only that it has so many other functionality as well so these are all the things that i will recommend for experienced and even you can think what gautam even for experience you have you are you have given very less amount of skill set guys this is what the reality i'm talking okay so this is what the reality you can connect with any people who work in the real time you can check with them or even you can go to linkedin and you can search for some job description so you will be getting only these tech stacks and there are some influencers used to uh, tell lot of skill set and you may get panic but that is the first enemy for you don't get panic while you upskill or you learn new things so the road map has to be get clear and you the fundamental has to be get clear right and also bonus like you can have some additional inform like like uh, knowledge on uh, solutioning part like you can make use of google and youtube just uh, see different projects use cases and connect to some of the solution architect and data engineering you can use make use of top mat and you can connect with them gather some knowledge and these all will help you to uh, upskill uh, your knowledge and this can be very good for securing your job or even in place of layoffs you can immediately get a new job all right fine so still the video has not ended so i just wanted to show you one last thing which is going to be the common for both freshers and experienced people make use of generative ai guys i was like, like repeatedly saying this even in my some of my videos also i've told you so make use of generative ai as in the recent interview sundar pichai said more than 25 percentage of their new code written in google with the help of ai so that means people are using generative ai to develop new functionalities writing codes so make use of generative ai make use of chat gpt learn prompts so people are using all these generative ai like a google search engine it's not it's not like that it's not only search engine it's beyond that so try to learn what is prompting you can make use of your uh, uh, company's edutech platform if they have anything like udemy or coursera if your company have given to you you can make use of that learn some prompting courses or make use of youtube you will get hell a lot of content for prompting and try to play with chat gpt and 
Cisco Pellet or any other uh, LLMs. And LinkedIn keep posting, write blogs, keep posting. LinkedIn is the ultimate platform for marketing yourself. Write blogs, you can create challenges. Whereas if you go and see my LinkedIn page, right? I used to create daily one challenge in PySpark and SQL where you get more audience. You will be getting more visitors to your profile. The impression is very important. So then HRs will reach out to you. All right. LinkedIn is the ultimate tool, uh, a key for the success. TopMate. So as I told you, TopMate. So TopMate is like where... People are ready to provide consulting, a paid consulting, or you can even uh, uh, give your advice to others in a paid way. So in TopMet, you can connect with the leading company solution architects, data engineers and data analysts, whomever, connect with them, uh, get some information with respect to projects. You can discuss with them resume building or mock interviews, get some use cases, project explanation, challenges, what they are faced. So all these things you can get from there. Right. So these are all something that I'm, I can say I can give you as a bonus for you for this. So the last thing just I wanted to show you is, see, if you like get confused with some of the uh, influencers, there are influencers who always create some uh, panic mode to their followers saying that learn this, learn that being in industry for 10 years, I can able to uh, know whether that particular influencer blog is valid or not. But if the newcomer comes, definitely they're going to get into the trap. So you can even test, for example, if there is an uh, influencer who is posting something, says that learn this ABC technology, you can just don't want to follow them blindly. Just just research whether this particular ABC technology is really used in, used by data engineers. So what you can do for that is, you can just go to LinkedIn, right? And go to LinkedIn, click jobs, and in the jobs you search for data engineer and choose location wherever it is. So now let me just choose India. And you can see there are some job postings that I can able to see. For example, if you take, I can see Walmart. You, you can just open it. Just not one job description. Open as much of, as job description by any companies and just go to their description and see what tech stack they are expecting from you. So just, just see what actually they're expecting. So if you see here, they're expecting like uh, strong knowledge and SQL and NoSQL. They're expecting you to have knowledge on Google Cloud. And then they are expecting you to know version control system. See, they have mentioned Airflow. So like that, so they have mentioned Scala and Spark. See, this is what you need to know. Out of whatever skill set they have mentioned, at least 70% your skill is matching with the JD is enough, is enough. You cannot fulfill 100% to all job descriptions, right? So always do a research. Whenever some influencer says, including myself, don't believe them blindly. Please do your own research so that you can get a clear roadmap and you can start learning. The first thing what you have to do is start learning. All right. So thank you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you really like this video, please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues. My Instagram page is in the description box of this video. That's it, guys. I'm there to teach you like this. Thanks for watching.